I'm going to host. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is the last of six uh, seminars that we've organized as part of a webinar series on targeting and community networks in anti-poverty programs. And we're very happy to have uh, Marcel Fachon give the last seminar. Um, Marcel was the pr first person to teach me about development economics <laughs> way back when at Stanford in graduate school. So it's always great to see him. And he's gonna share some of his work on mobilizing P2P diffusion in Bangladesh. Marcel, it's all yours. Thanks a lot. Well, it's a great pleasure to, to be, uh, to be uh, talking to you guys. Um, this is work with um, a joint work with Assad Islam, who I believe is uh, attending Abdul Malik, who also said he would be attending and Debayan Pakrashi. Um, and it's a second paper we've uh, done together about uh, basically about how to um, to promote the diffusion of agricultural technology and focusing on a specific technology called the uh, systems of rice um, um, intensification, SRI, which has um, the advantage and drawback that it doesn't include it doesn't require additional input, so it's an advantage for 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 lots of because you don't run into issues of uh, people having liquidity constraints or things like that. Um, but then the, the downside is that it's actually a difficult technology to master, and so people uh, the, the difficulty with this technology is um, how to to train farmers in, in applying it. Okay. And so, of course, you could try to train all the potential beneficiaries, all the pot because you know if you don't know who's going to benefit from it, you, you can try to train everybody. Um, but that's obviously going to be costly. And so, with BRAC, we've been trying to BRAC in Bangladesh, we've been trying to find ways of um, of targeting um, benef beneficiaries, if you want, the farmers who would benefit from this innovation of targeting them better. The first, the first article we wrote about that, we, tr we tried to get, we trained some farmers and then we asked them to recommend, refer basically, um, uh, other farmers they thought would benefit from the, from the training. So that was the first step we did. That kind of work then, it didn't really work like the way we were expecting. We were expecting the, the referred trainees to be adopting, you know, to be better adopters, basically, be basically better targeted. And uh, that's, that's not really what we found. So this time we tried another approach, which is, um, you know, has a long history in agricultural extension, which is, ba is basically based on the idea of a model farmer, uh, but we tried to improve it basically. So, but if you remember the model farmer, the, the extension agent comes to the village and says, I can't, I can't, you know, teach everybody. So I'm going to uh, to select some farmers who I believe are role models for others who are also more receptive to innovation and I'm going to train them. And then uh, I'm going to hope that this will then naturally diffuse through an unspecified process through the, the, the local population. Okay. I, I'm sure there are more, more, more structured ways of doing it, but that's kind of a, a, a rough characterization of what the model farmer uh, approach is. And um, so what we try to do here is we're gonna, we're gonna try to we can tr start from that. And, um, but instead of hoping that these, these model farmers, um, you know, do viral marketing, basically, they basically become your, your champions, your, your marketing agents for your, for your, for your innovation. Uh, we're going to actually ask them to train two farmers. We're going to assign them these two farmers. We're going to say, okay, you're going you're to train Jack and Jill. These are the two the two trainees we've assigned to you, and uh, you go, you know, um, try to do a good job of it. So that's the that's the basic idea that we have. Our intervention is basically taking trainees, people who have received this one day. Uh, course on, uh, on, SR, on SRI from BRAC, and uh, we're gonna uh, assign them to other uh, farmers 
who could have been trainees, could have been BRAC trainees, uh, but we're going to say, well, what do we get? Can we get? Can we? Achieve, what what fraction of uh, the effect of BRAC training can we achieve by asking this these trainees to themselves teach other farmers? Well, that's the, that's the logic. So each each of the so we call them teacher trainees. Sometimes we call them teachers for short, but obviously they are not school teachers. They just uh, asked to teach other other farmers in our experiment. Can I ask a clarificatory question, please? Yeah, sure. So sure. how much uh, experience do these teacher trainees have with the technology before they're expected to train others? No. They don't have any? They don't have any. Ex experience with the technology? So you, you said experience. So they have been, they, they received a one day training from Brack. And then they are asked to, you know, can you teach the, the, the instruction list that you, you have been you know, told and, and taught, taught about uh, to these two other people? Yeah. And okay. people take a quiz. And uh, so basically we're gonna, be, we're gonna be comparing adoption between teacher trainees and trainees. And of course, we also have control farmers who didn't receive any uh, training. We have control farmers in the treated villages where some people receive the training. We also have control uh, farmers in villages where there was no training whatsoever. So I'll talk about that in detail in a minute, but that's the, that's the way we're gonna to try to see whether, um, whether this model uh, transfers knowledge. So basically we're gonna quiz the, 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 the trainees, the teacher trainees at the end on, on what they're supposed to be learning. And we're gonna teach the, the students of these uh, teacher trainees who, who did not receive the BRAC training we're going to quiz them about about uh, their knowledge as well, and then we're going to see whether they, have, you know, we we also have uh, we we know that uh, the the average farmer who has not been trained does not know what SRI is in this particular part of the world, so it's not it's not like they would not naturally know what it is, and then we also look at adoption um, of the recommended practices later on, and we uh, which is measured by BRAC, and then we also. Um, have a, an endline survey where we measure uh, agricultural outcomes like uh, profits and yields and so forth. So that's the that's the basic uh, idea. I'll, I'll go through the to the intervention in more detail in a minute. Um, there are some villages we incentivize the teachers to. Basically, we thought maybe if we incentivize them, they would do a better job. So they are incentivized to teach um, to the test. <laughs> So basically, they, 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 they've already taken a test and they are told, well, you know, we'll test your students uh, using the same quiz and then we'll, we'll give you an incentive if they answer the quiz questions well. So this basically testing whether they can, um, they can convey this key information about SRI to their, to their students. And uh, we hope that that knowledge and translates into, into a higher adoption. adoption. And then, you know, from the model farmer idea, this model farmer idea. So remember the, 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 the key idea of that model was that this person was a role model for other farmers and th therefore the other farmers would want to copy him or her. So we thought, well, maybe we can emulate that as well. I mean, here, so the way we did that is that we ask in ba at baseline, we ask each of the farmers in our sample to, to list at most five other farmers in, 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 in the list we're giving them, whom they would regard as, as role models, whom they would basically, whom they would consider as sources of valuable information for, for agricultural technology. So that's the, that's the idea. And, um, and then basically in a way I'll explain where we, we, we the, you know, remember each teacher trainee gets Two students assigned to him, they, they're all male. Um, so, and one of them is going to be someone who has who has nominated that farmer as a role model, who has listed him as a role model, and the other one is someone who has not nominated him as a role model. So that's the idea. So we, and the idea is based on this model farmer idea is that it's a role model, therefore it's going to work better uh, in terms of diffusing the innovation from teacher trainees to those farmers that nominated them, to, to those farmers that regard them 
regarded teacher training as a role model. So that's the, that's the key idea. Um, and, and this is done through an algorithm I'll describe in a minute. So that's the basic idea of what we do. Um, in terms of, uh, and I'll, I'll explain the experiment uh, more, more in detail, obviously. In terms of, uh, just to remind, I'm, I'm sure some of you already know uh, what uh, this system, perhaps even better than I do, what the system of uh, rice intensification is. But uh, my understanding of it is basically, it's a set of different practices that have to do with transplanting, the way you do the transplanting, the date of transplanting, and especially things like uh, spacing, thinning, and uh, the way you water the plant, the regularity of the water in the plant and so on. So this is space, they have to be basically spaced further apart from each other and, uh, and there's going to be more thinning than uh, what farmers would normally do. And as a result, these, uh, these uh, is single plants that survive grow bigger and they get, they get more grain. So that's, that's the logic of uh, SRI, that's, as far as I understand it. Now, as you can see, there's no, you know, these are all practices. There, there's no um, inputs required. So there's no, there's no purchased inputs, I mean, uh, that are related to adoption of SRI. So that, that means several things. Um, it means things that um, and if it was a fertilizer or a new seed or a new pesticide or, or something, farmers could in principle go to the, to the seller of this uh, input and ask them, you know, what should I use on my rice? How should I use it? How should I apply it? When? There's not such thing here. So we don't have to worry about contamination of our sample by some external agent who comes and gives them uh, information about this technology. Okay, so that, that simplifies our work. It's, it makes, uh, it eliminate, it reduces contamination from external uh, actors, from vendors in this case. Um, it also means that you don't you don't have to worry about externalities through input markets. I mean, if you if you introduce a new uh, a new a new fertilizer, let's say, and uh, there's a whole value chain that has to bring this fertilizer to the villages, and uh, only you know nobody only you are the only one who wants to buy it. You know, chances are you're not going to find it because they the traders are not going to find it useful to bring the fertilizer to the village just in the off chance that you might buy this one bag of fertilizer. So, they, it's, so they're going to be network externalities in the sense that, you know, the more people are buying it, the more it will make sense for um, uh, sellers of uh, agricultural inputs to stock it. And therefore you would have, and you will have more information and the other farmers will have more information. So you get into this kind of system of, uh, of externality. So we don't have to work. The, the problem with that is that that would break Sudva. So, so, I mean, uh, we, we're already looking at diffusion, which is something that's very, it, it already by, na by nature, kind of breaks, breaks uh, SUDVA somewhat. So we, we, we don't want more to have to worry about more violations of SUDVA uh, that, yeah. that we have to. Could there be an effect on the quantity of inputs that they purchase? I'm wondering if you have to space we'll out. Look at that. We will look at that, but we're not introducing any new inputs. Yeah. yeah but we'll look at that, yeah. Um, the, the main thing though is that it's, it's, I would, people sometimes describe this technology as more labor intensive. It's, it seems like we, because, because the farmers have to go and visit the field sometimes more often, but really it's more management incentive in, intensive. They, they have to be more careful and they have to also change the way they were doing things, but they, were, they, they have to measure, they have to count how to thin properly and so on. So they, it's a little bit more scientific. And so as a result, it, it's a bit more demanding in terms of attention and, and care and, and a bit harder for the farmer to delegate. So uh, that's the sense in which it's more demanding on the farmer. So that's the idea. So, but, but these things again means that if it's, it's about management, it's not something that will diffuse naturally through observation. You can't just copy people. Oh, he has a new iPhone. I'm gonna have a new iPhone. You can't just copy people's behavior just by, by observing what they're doing. So you have to really be taught how to do it. So that's the, that's the idea uh, of this. There's gonna be some diffusion happening and naturally, of course, people will talk, but it, it, it will come, it, you know, the hope is that it all comes from, uh, from, uh, 
from the training that uh, uh, BRAC does and then the way that this diffuses then to students and perhaps then eventually to some other people in the village. And as we will we'll see later, there's very little contamination across villages. So, so which again, confirming that people don't seem to know this technology beforehand. Um, now, I, I'm not going to spend too much on this slide, but but there's, there's obviously a very large literature on diffusion of innovation. Here, I've picked a few uh, papers that uh, that are more in the development economics literature, re reasonably recent papers. Um, so that, but it is of course a much larger literature behind it, uh, including of course in marketing, uh, because you know diffusion of new products is our innovation. So there's, there's going to be some some the large literature on that. There's some literature on SRI. And basically, the, base, the basic, the, the main message of this literature is that SRI is not for everyone. You, you need to be a dedicated farmer to benefit from it. If you're not um, up to snuff, let's say, if you're just like a, somebody who does it because they can't earn an income from, some, from something else, you might not necessarily benefit from it because it, it, it's actually demanding in terms of of, of understanding of what's going on in the field. So that, that's the sense in which it's not a technology that we expect to benefit everyone. And therefore it's a technology for which targeting is important. You know, you have to be able to, you know, you want to economize uh, on the cost of training by focusing your training on, on people who will benefit from it. So that's the idea. Um, of course, there is also a, a large literature on peer-to-peer -peer transmission, which is what we are trying to uh, achieve here. And of course, more generally on the role of social proximity in, in viral marketing. So I'm not gonna, I, you know, these are just a, hand, just a very small number of papers I'm citing here. So let me, if, if there are no more questions about, the, no questions about the, the, the setup, the context, I can delve into the, immediately delve into the experimental design. As I said, it's with BRAC. Um, we've selected 100 villages uh, from these two districts, uh, Rangpur and Bagura in uh, Bangladesh. Um, and the way that BRAC works, um, as far as SRI is concerned, they go to these, to, they, when they arrive in a village, they start by identifying uh, 30 potential SRI adopters. And these are people who obviously have to grow rice, otherwise there's no point. And, um, they have to they have to be large enough. In other words, more than one decimal. I, I forgot exactly the it's in the paper, but the, the lower limit. But they're trying to find these intermediate farmers who have enough uh, 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 land that they grow to, to 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 signal that they're actually farmers, not just uh, gardeners, if you want. And, but they're also not too big, okay? So they, they kind of live in this intermediate uh, size. So they kind of are generally poor people, but they are a little bit uh, more focused on rice than, than some of the very small ones. Um, and if the village is too big and they have more than 30, then basically what they would end up doing, um, um, not necessarily here, but what they would end up doing is kind of to say this, two groups of 30 and then there was like one in the eastern part of the village, one of the western part of the village. So, you know, it's a densely populated country. So you, you, you get, uh, sometimes you get large villages. So they would do that. So basically they, and that's that's how they proceed um, in their SRI uh, training campaign. So we, we wanted to, to kind of, we didn't want to change that because we wanted to be policy relevant, we wanted whatever we whatever we introduce, whatever we, we we find, we wanted this to be immediately you could slot it into the normal strategy, the normal practices of, of BRAC in the country. So that was the idea. Um, and also we, you know, because they're not stupid, they 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 also want to save on uh, economize on on on, on uh, train waste wasting training time on, on uh, people who never adopt. We, we hope that through that system, we, the 30 farmers they identify are probably farmers among whom the probability adoption is higher. It's not 100% by any means, but it's, it's, it's higher. So that's the idea. So basically uh, let's focus on those people. Um, and we're gonna be looking at diffusion among that group. 
We start with a baseline questionnaire on the household composition in pharmacists. It's a fairly light um, uh, uh, baseline. Um, and then we assign 60 villages to treatment and the 40 remaining ones to control. In controls, there's no uh, uh, SRI BRAC intervention. And then in the treated villages, um, a selected number of teacher trainees, uh, farmers, uh, receive one day training in SRI. Okay. And uh, um, of the 60 villages selected for treatment, there's 30 that are also assigned to an incentivized teacher treatment, assist, uh, an, 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 a, a, a treatment whereby the teacher train, trainee um, is, is gaining uh, a compensation for training students that depend on their performance in the quiz. While in the other 30 villages, the teacher trainee receives a, a fixed uh, compensation per, per student. So that's the way we put it. Uh, and if you look at the, you know, more precisely, what is the, how is this compensation uh, constructed? Well, they, they get a, a fixed fee, if you want, a participation fee of a four, 300 taka or $4. And then in the incentivized treatment, they get 250 taka additional per student at the end of the teaching week. And then another, uh, they, they, get, they are given a week to train them because they, I, I, I'm, I'm not expecting them to be training them uh, every day, all the time, but, but you, know, you have to give them some time for them to meet. And so that's the logic of it. And you don't wait too long, so there's no point. Um, and then uh, the incentivized Marcel, training. Marcel, question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how are, the how are the teacher trainees selected? I, I, I'm getting to that. It's the next, oh, okay. I'm getting to that right, right away. Anyway, so that's the easy part, explaining the this kind of uh, incentives is basically you get a fixed amount and then you you lose something every time the, 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 the your student uh, answers the quiz wrongly. That's right. um, so now let's let's talk about the assignment rule. Um, so as I explained earlier, in the baseline in the treated villages, each farmer nominates up to five as role models, but so the opinion leaders or role models. And then we have these thirty farmers, and then we we have to assign them into to to four different roles basically. Some are going to be teachers, they're going to receive the training. Some are going to be receiving nothing at all. They're going to be the non-students. They're going to be uh, they're going to be able to look at, if you want, an, an incentivized, unorganized diffusion. And then we're going to have the students, and there are two types of students, the students who nominated. So remember, there are two students per teacher trainee, one nominated a teacher trainee as a opinion leader or role model, and one who did not nominate that particular teacher trainee. So that's how it's, uh, so they have to be assigned to these four groups. How do we do this? So we start by picking uh, six teacher trainees. So the, those are gonna receive the BRAC training. And um, this we did um, uh, by dividing, so remember, once we get the five nominations per nominating farmer, per, 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 per each of the 30 farmers, we can look at who they nominate, right? So maybe all of them nominate Albert. So then, you know, Albert will be nominated by, you know, we'll have 29 nominations. And then, uh, you know, maybe Dilip is gonna have 28 or something like that. So you, you get a sense of, and then some people will have none. So basically, we basically divide the, 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 the 30 farmers into those that receive uh, above the median number of nominations and those that receive less than the median number of nominations. So that's the, and then among the, the, those that are above the median, we, we select four teacher trainees and the others we select two teacher trainees. So this is basically stratified sampling. Right? We had a variable where we collected ourselves. It's known to us. We do sampling stratified. Okay, so they don't, they don't have the same, based on their observable characteristics at baseline, they get slightly different probabilities of being assigned to a particular treatment. Okay. So we'll have to correct for that when we, in a minute, because that, 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 that stratified sampling, which is not pure randomization. 
Now, what about the other 24 farmers? So then we have assigned these six people at random, uh, uh, the way they are explained. So you're left with 24 farmers. We know we want 12 students and 12 non-students. And then we want uh, six students who are matched with a, a teacher that they nominated and uh, six students who are matched with somebody they did not nominate. So how do we do this? Well, we do this using an algorithm. This algorithm is uh, mechanistic. So it just basically, you could think of the, of the algorithm as um, you start by randomizing all the farm, the 30 farmers in the village. Then you, you know, based on that sorting, shuff, reshuffling of the farmers, you pick the four, the first four who are above the median in terms of nomination and the first two who are above the median uh, above, below the median in terms of nomination, these are going to be the teacher trainees. So now that you have the teacher trainees, you start looking among the, 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 the 24 farmers for farmers who nominated them, farmers who did not nominate them, and so on. And, and you go through the list, you go through the list of farmers in the order they've been shuffled until you finally have allocate everybody. So the, the, the order in which they've been shuffled will determine the the order in which they are considered by the algorithm to be assigned to a, a teacher or not. Does it make sense? So that means yeah, that the- it, Marcel, it seems, still seems like it's not gonna be very random if uh, for each of the uh, teachers, you have to find one student who nominated them because maybe for some of the teachers, there was only one or two students who nominated him, right? If I'm understanding the algorithm correctly. Yeah, yeah, but that's enough, that's okay. That, that's okay, yeah. I, I don't think there is a, a village where we we had the problem of uh, of selecting uh, a, a teacher who was nominated by nobody. I, I don't think it happened because I, this is an issue that we raised at the beginning, but there, there, this didn't, didn't occur. Okay, so you always find uh, they be nominated by at least one person. Uh, one other question. Uh, I mean, when they are asked to nominate somebody as a role model, are they, you know, one criterion could be who you, who do you think is going to be the most successful in adopting the technology himself? The other is who is going to be the best teacher? Uh, and those two need not be the same. Sure. So what, what is your understanding of what, you know, what they think of when they say role model? Um, well, I mean, you will see that actually this has no effect. Okay, so we, we can talk about what they meant. Maybe they didn't mean anything, it's possible. Um, but uh, the wording was basically whom would you be look, I mean, the, wor the wording is not in, it, it's, it's phrased in terms of agricultural technology. So who, who would you be going to for information about the new agricultural technology? That's the basic idea. Now, it may be that they, they just go to their neighbor. So it may be that this person is not particularly knowledgeable about it. Yeah. But that's, that's, that was the intention. The intention was to identify someone who was perceived as a, as a more, at least by, by, by the student farmers, by perceived as someone who would be more authoritative. That was the, the, the intention. And so the idea was that if he's more authoritative, you, you probably would, would listen more to what he says, so you might do better on the quiz, and you might also um, follow this person's example more, and therefore, and therefore um, if they adopt, you might adopt it, uh, adopt as well. In fact, we, we're gonna be testing for those things in the, in, in the paper. But before I go to that, to the, to the more substantive issues of the paper, which are actually where, where the, the interesting stuff is, um, I, need to be, I need to basically address this issue of um, weights. I mean, clearly this algorithm um, generates different probabilities of being assigned to one of the four treatments for each of the 30 farmers. And, um, 
And so you might think, well, wait a minute. I mean, uh, I know how to deal with this problem if it if it's stratified sampling, because in stratified sampling, I just look at the stratification ratio that I use and I correct for that using weights. But here you say, well, wait a minute. I don't I don't know. It's just the algorithm. It's a black box. What? But the thing is that the algorithm, you can reproduce it as many, as many times as you want. You can reshuffle the farmers, rate again, reshuffle the farmers, rate again, rate again, rate again, rate 500 times. Look at what, how, you know, of these 500 times, how many times does Albert get assigned to be a teacher and how much does Marcel get assigned to be a teacher? And that, that becomes your probability of assignment. Now, the, the problem is going to be if there is somebody who's always assigned to be a teacher, somebody who's never assigned to be a teacher, then you, you, you think, well, wait a minute, I, those people I can't compare because they, uh, you know, they, 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 I, don't, I don't have people who are. Um, so I, I, I will look at that. I will have to check that this is not the case because those people then would have to be taken out because they, they never, they have zero chance of, uh, you can't construct, a, you can't construct a, 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 a sampling weight for them. Right? It's infinite basically, or zero. So that's the. Uh, we'll, we'll, I get back to that in a minute. But that's the that's the idea. But the main the main the main thing here is that it's got a rule deter, rule based deterministic like aspect given a certain ordering of farmers in reshuffling of farmers, and it follows a rule. So it's and this rule is entirely based on things that we observe at baseline, just like if you were doing stratified sampling, you have some kind of baseline information on the people, and then you're gonna organize your sampling based on that. So it's not, it's not about selection of unobservables. There are gonna be things that, co that correlated with uh, these observables for sure, but, uh, but uh, we, we, that's why we need to correct for, uh, for sampling weights. But uh, uh, so that's the idea. Um, so, as I said, we have got four types of treated farmers, um, two types of treated villages, incentivized teacher and non-incentivized teacher. We only have more, one type of control farmers. And basically what we'll do is we compare, say, teacher trainees to control farmers or teacher trainees to non-students or, um, that's all. So that's, the, that's what we're gonna be doing. So let's talk a little bit more about this assignment to, to treatment type. So remember, this assignment to treatment is under our full control. There's no, there's no self-selection whatsoever. We assign them. It's based on observables, which we have at baseline. And uh, it's, it's, it's based on an algorithm, which we can use to replicate many times the, 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 the assignment process. So that's the key. But basically, we can we based on that we can, as I have explained, we can reconstruct what the what the probability of being assigned to the to each of the four treatments uh, would be for any particular. In fact, for any individual in the sample, we can do this individual by individual. Okay. And so that that way we can recover the probabilities. So let me show you just how it works in practice. So if, let's say you have two populations that are treated. And the control, the, the normal way of measuring the average treatment effect would be just to look at the mean of the treatment, the mean of the control if they have been randomly assigned to it. And if there's, it's, it's, there's no stratification whatsoever, you just take the, the sample mean, okay? Now, in our case, we can't do the sample mean. We're gonna, for the, for the, for the, for the so this is, this is people assigned to a specific treatment. So we're going to, to basically use inverse probability weighting. So that, that's, that's something you already know. So, you know, we, 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 this is, the, pro, this is the, the, the probability that somebody would be assigned to this particular treatment. We normalize this by K, so, which is the sum of these uh, 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 PI, so that you want to normalize because you want this thing that is say if the, the probability is one, for everybody in a particular <laughs> village, you want this thing to be one over one, right? So that, that cancels out and you, you back to the standard uh, mean. Everybody happy with that? You need to standardize yeah. so that you don't, you don't bias the, the, the mean above or. Marcel, you know, I had a question. I mean, this yeah. all makes sense to me, but if you were going to reweight to try to make it in some sense representative, 
then why don't you just randomize at the beginning and then you don't have to deal with the weights. I'm just curious about, you know, the decision to stratify in this way and then to reweight it back to the random representativeness. No, but the, no, the, but the, uh, no, the, that, that is, uh, uh, why do you stratify a sample in any, any, you know, why do you ever stratify a sample? It's because you want to be able to compare two, two populations. In this case, we wanted to compare nominating and non-nominating. We wanted to compare uh, teacher and the others. So we wanted to be, um, and the, the, big, the big challenge was nominating and non-nominating because we don't control who's nominating who. So basically that's the, that's the way we, we, um, we ended up approaching it. Right, yeah. but the cost is you get a higher variance. In, I mean, the greater variance in the weights reduces power in, in some sense, yeah. right? Yeah. But I can see the trade-off, right? No, I understand. I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that. But we, we don't have enough power, so. So my interpretation is that you wanted to try to understand the mechanisms as well. And if you're trying to think about mechanisms, uh, I mean, what I would be inclined to do is to, well, there's obviously heterogeneity. And let's say that people vary in skill, which, and there's just essentially one kind of skill you know, you, your better role model uh, or not. And there's information about your skill that's in the, in the population. Uh, so you ask people and, uh, uh, you know, to nominate people. So you try to elicit community information about skill, uh, but you've got that fundamental heterogeneity and there could be a second order of heterogeneity, which is that the effectiveness of uh, you as a teacher also depends on the skill of the student. So it could be math specific. So what you want to do is estimate, you know, for any pair of skills for the teacher and the student, you know, how effective is the transmission and diffusion going to be? So that's what you're going to try and back out. Uh, then, uh, you know, I presume that this, this design will get at that uh, because you've randomized and then the, you've got a third dimension of randomization, which is the, uh, the incentives for the, the, the teacher. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, that's by so I guess you could have you could have written down a model that would have rationalized the design and and all the effects that you want to isolate. I imagine that that's at the back of your mind. Yeah, it's at the back of the mind. I, I didn't for this paper we didn't we didn't write a model. I, I, I confess we didn't write a model. No, we, we just focused on the. We just didn't do it for this this paper, um, and maybe I should have added. I mean, it, there's some discussion of that in the in the in the paper. Maybe I should have added some slides about that. But I, I thought I was just going to talk talk you into it as I was going uh, as I was presenting the different pieces of evidence I have. Um, but you're right. So so you, you raised several points here. So there's one I remember, which is the what about match specific gain. So remember, I, I, maybe you maybe you saw the paper I wrote with Demo about that. This is, these are kids who are assigned to to do a course, a math course, with one of the kid in a Chinese school. And so there, we actually looked as, at to at, at the math specific game. But then they it was easier, much easier, because everybody was in pairs. They were just assigned randomly by design to another person. There was no, there was no need for a matching algorithm like this, like we did here, which is basically randomized matching. And so there we could see whether, you know, if a, if a less able kid is matched with a more able kid, whether, whether the, the, the less able kid learns more, it turns out they, they do actually. And the, the more able kid doesn't seem to learn less. So, so that was actually a good, a good result for that. Um, um, so that's an example of, uh, of, of, so I know, but here we are, we're just going to be looking at the average. So I'm, I'm not, I don't have, I don't, I don't ambition to identify pairwise because I don't have very, as you you're right. I don't have very good, um, identification there. So I, I don't, I don't want to make any, any statements about that. It's not that I don't think it's important. It's just, just that I, I don't think I'm very, I'm on very strong terrain there. So rather avoid seeing that. Um, I suspect you, the way you stratify, you have the identification, but you maybe not be having enough power. 
I, I don't know about that. <clears throat> But we'll see about power. I, I, I think we have power and we actually um, a cluster standard errors at the village level. So we, we have a hundred villages, so it's fine. So, I mean, it's not like we've been very uh, conservative. I mean, you know, that's- no, not, not for the average treatment effect, but for the, the, the heterogeneous treatment effects. We don't have heterogeneous treatment effects. I know, I know. If you did, if you did what I was suggesting, write down a model and try to identify uh, the heterogeneous treatment effects to understand the mechanism, you may be underpowered to estimate the heterogeneous treatment effects. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, agree so with that. I understand. Okay, but you are mainly talking about power for the average treatment effect, which is fine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's true. That's very true. Um. Okay, so I've, I've explained this. You can also using use the same once you since you recalibrate these means to be representative of the control village population, you can also compare them to each other. So once you have recalibrated them, you should compare them. So you can compare one group of treated with a, to another group of treated. They've they've been you know. Um, I've already explained this. I mean, the easiest way to explain uh, how you recover the probabilities, the easiest way to, uh, to understand it is that if you think that each person is a different X vector, so then you, you would uh, you know, run a bunch of simulations. I think we've, we've run 500 simulations. So you would run, um, let's say first simulation, um, Dilip gets assigned to be a teacher. And so therefore it's one, zero, zero, zero. So that's one sample. And then in another sam in another simulation, he gets assigned to be a nominating student. So he's here and then he's there, okay? Basically you do this for other times, some of them get frequencies, frequency. How often does Dilip get to be a teacher? You know, maybe a lot of times. So therefore he's gonna be, you know, he's overrepresented, if you want, in the in the teacher population. So we're gonna want to uh, weigh his to reweight the teacher population so that he gets less weight. That's the that's the idea. So that's how this is done here. Uh, all right. Now the thing you have to worry if you do that. The thing you have to worry is that people who never get assigned to a particular uh, role, because then then as I said, they 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 basically um, don't have a kind of a comparable person. So, so this is not what we get. So these are basically the, the, these, uh, these normalized uh, probabilities, the, the, the weights that we are using. And, um, the sum, and, and so, you know, they are of course centered on one, which is the mean, and uh, it doesn't even reach 0.5 and it doesn't go, it, you know, like a couple observation above Couple people above uh, above two, but very few. So basically, the the range of values of these of these weights is not crazy. It, it stays within a, a relatively narrow range, and so that means that um, the reweighting we are doing is not is not is not insane. So it's not like one person is ninety nine percent of the time always a teacher, and then you 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 take his inverse his sampling weight is going to be one. Over 99, and so it's going to, you know, it's going to be uh, so nine, it's going to be very large. And so not, not uh, no, it would be it would be uh, 99 over one. So it, it would be very small. Okay. Anyway, so the so that you you, you want to look to whether you have very large value, very small value. So you don't have that. So that's actually quite uh, quite encouraging. Balance. There are lots of tables about balance in the in the paper. They are in the appendix. Um, balance across the different types of treatment, and there we, uh, we 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 don't find any problem with balance. Note that we do balance uh, controlling for sampling weights, and we also cluster standard errors by village. So so we, we try to do this the same way we we would perform the rest of the analysis. So this is the. This is the first table I have. These are just descriptives and well, a bit more than descriptive. I have some, some, I have some tests, but the, the first part of the table, if you want the first half of the table, the top half is about um, perhaps the you know, issues of possible interest. One is, uh, you know, how do people score on the test? Whether the test has got 
um, actually it should be zero to one to eight. The test has eight questions, so they could either answer them all wrong. I think it should 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 say zero to eight, or they could answer. I think nobody does that, but they could all, they could answer all of them right, and the average is about seven. So they're pretty good at remembering what the correct answer is. This is on, in in general. Not that we didn't ask these questions in the control villages, but but we know from uh, from other observational data that, that they don't know much about SRI. Um, and this is just another variable we use as, as to whether they can uh, answer the three main questions correctly and you get you get 88% of farmers who can, of treated farmers, in treated, no, not treated farmers, farmers in treated villages who can do that. In terms of nomination, remember they could make up to, they could make up to five nominations. They actually make make nearly all five of five nominations. So it's very stable. We don't have to worry too much about some of them nominating one because he's the only one who matters and then some nominating five. Nearly everybody nominates five. So that, that helps us as well. And now we already have, uh, I can already show you some of the average uh, treatment effects uh, or at least the, the, the means, the, the, the the means in each of the samples. So because I, I have the means in the control villages, these are these are the, 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 the adoption variables that I have. Um, this is just basically comparing control villages to treated villages. And these are means, village level means. Okay, I'm, I'm, of course I'm going to be looking at more than that, but so the first the variable is basically whether BRAC estimate that that the farmer has adopted at least some of the practices of SRI. And in control villages by, you know, about two and a half percent of the farmers in that village are estimated by BRAC as, a, so basically less than one farmer. Um, while in treated villages, about a third of the farmers, okay? This is across the whole village. Um, in terms of the proportion of land, uh, and of course that, that is massively significant. Uh, we have 3,000, I forgot to tell you the, the, the sample size, but we, but, you know, we have 30 farmers times 100 villages, so we have 3,000 farmers altogether. So it, this kind of difference across uh, 60 villages versus 40 villages, you know, it's, it's, that's certainly it's significant. Um, proportion of land is just a percentage of, the, of their cultivated acreage uh, that, is, uh, that is on which SRI uh, practices are followed. Um, so that's uh, that, that's there again. You get you see that uh, in treated villages you get a much bigger proportion. These are the number of SRI principles adopted on the plot. In control villages, actually, they they are recorded as you know adopting 1.4, but that could just be that they by chance uh, adopted one of those uh, one of those uh, um, practices, but. Very few of them adopt more than one. So there's basically, it's, it's, it's a mean, it looks like a high mean, but it, it's not the same practice that every farmer adopts, right? So they, they basically randomly adopt certain things without knowing that it's, it's called SRI. Um, very few of them, this is very important, very few of them actually follow the, 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 the transplanting rule, which is about the age of the seedlings, very few in, in control villages, very few of them. Um, follow the, the recommended distance between bundles, the, the, the places where they, they transplant the rice. Um, but it's, it's exactly quite a bit higher in, in, um, in treated villages, even though this still remains very low. So they still don't like to follow the age of the seedling. So it's certainly not complete adoption. And then, um, and then in terms of number of seedlings per bundle, uh, you have a bit higher practice you know, this practice is already kind of uh, somewhat there, even in control villages, but even there is higher in uh, treated villages. So that's that's in terms of practices, what actually do the, so that you see, uh, we're not, it's not like you say, I, I, you know, have you adopted this fertilizer? Meaning have you used this fertilizer on any of your, of your uh, fields? Here you have, you know, uh, uh, a whole bunch of, uh, uh, six main recommendations from SRI recommendation. And they basically um, what, what is being tracked here are the main recommendations that they make. Uh, these are, this is the data that we have on, 
uh, agricultural performance at end line. We have yield, value of crop output, input costs, labor costs, um, uh, total costs, and profits. And here, these are all in, uh, so this is in kg per decimal. A decimal is a very small unit of uh, land, land, land area uh, used in, uh, in Bangladesh. Um, and these are uh, Bangladeshi taka per decimal. So these are in local currency. And you can see there they are differences, uh, like for instance, it's about 30 some taka difference here. Uh, here there's, there's basically, if anything, it's lower in terms of costs. Uh, it's the same in terms of labor cost on average. And it's the same in terms of total cost. So there's a little bit of a higher value of output. And so you get a little bit of higher imputed profit. Okay, so that's the, and these, these things are significant. There's also something significant. This is even that is significant, even though it's, it's, it's reasonably small. So these are all average comparisons. So now we we, we haven't divided uh, uh, farmers in treated villages into the different uh, treatment categories. So let's, let's let's do that now. So here we've divided them into teacher trainee, nominating, nominating student, non-nominating student, and non-student. These are the control means that I just showed you a minute ago, and these are the adoption levels. So you can see immediately that, that you know, the teacher trainees adopt a very high probability, um, about 70% of them, the, the, this are, the dependent variable is, 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 uh, is, takes a value 100 if they adopt and zero if they don't adopt, so that each coefficient is easily readable as a percentage point. Um, and remember the, the baseline level of adoption is very small. So, so everybody here is significantly above that, 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 that value. So they're all, all quite significant. Once you, and then if you start looking at the, at the rest of the table, you get lots of, uh, lots of stars. So basically, you know, even here where even in control villages is, you know, close to 18% of the farmers who follow this practice uh, anyway, but then you, you get a much higher, much higher. Uh, these are, these are you, you, the, you know, you have to add 18 to 17 to get uh, how much a non-nominating student, uh, how much he, he follows the number of seeding per bundle. That's the way to read the table. So that's the intercept if you want. Are these about just the plot on which they're doing it or the plots on which they're doing it? Or is it about right, so here, here, all the plots are included. So this is basically a regression that runs by plot. Uh, that's why there are, so, there are more than 3000 observations because farmers could, uh, could mention the, up to three plots. They collected information up to the, the three biggest plots. They collected information on that. And it's basically what the focus of the study is, it's because BRAC is not going to go and visit all your little tiny little thing. So they basically focus on up to three plots per farmer, and these tend to be the biggest ones, and rice could typically be included, so that, that's okay. Yeah. So that's the, that's the way it's done. Um, but so, so basically, the, the, the lesson from this is that, yeah, we've got pretty good effect on on all these practices on adoption as measured, you know, in a rel relatively generous way here, um, compared to uh, farmers in control villages. So that's the that's the first lesson. And then if you look, well, you know, these numbers are different. So what about this number compared to this one? What about this number compared to this one, and so on? So what about this number? So what? So here we just basically using these regressions. So for the first colony, we use this regression and we just do these pairwise t-tests. You know, is, is the coefficient um, of teacher trainee significantly different from the coefficient of nominating students? So basically we do these pairwise comparisons to see whether there's a difference in treatment effects. And you can see that when we're comparing teachers and students, you always get, these are p-values here. So we just report p-values um, since it's a test. And uh, so they basically they are they are more adopting than other people. You can see lots of zeros everywhere. I see zeros everywhere here. And so teachers are clearly overwhelmingly adopting more uh, SRI, 
in terms of the students, um, you can see that both both students, you know, the, all of them is like also nearly all uh, there's one two here, but other than that, they're pretty high, uh, pretty low p values so or high again a high uh, significant effect that they, they they are more likely to adopt their non-students in treated villages. Okay, so it's not just that there was some kind of diffusion in the whole village and they benefited from it. It's that they basically the fact that they were targeted by our intervention through a teacher, uh, a trainee to receive SRI instruction, it actually made them more likely to adopt uh, these SRI practices. Um, there is the only place where it is, except for this one, which is borderline significant, I would say, everything else here is not significant. So basically this idea that we, we had, which is basically behind the model farmer uh, logic the idea that uh, people would pay more attention if they are matched to somebody they look up to, somebody they regard as an opinion leader, as a as a as a source of valuable information. Um, and so, if this was the case, you know, being matched with a model farmer, somebody you regard as a as a model, uh, makes you more likely to adopt what they tell you to do, what they teach you. Um, then you would expect this number, you would expect all these numbers to be positive and significant. They're all negative. Yeah. Thankfully, they're not significantly negative, but they're all negative, except for this one, which is borderline significant. But, yes, but yes. Marcel, the, the teacher trainee has been nominated by somebody, right? They're all above median nominations. Isn't no, that no, 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 no. There's four above median and two below median. Okay, so is this coming from the above median or the below median, or is it the same, no matter which? So what I'm trying to get at is, I think your interpretation was it doesn't, you don't have to be a model farmer. You're equally effective at disseminating, I think is what you were saying. But, but okay. I'm saying that out of six, four were considered a model by, by a larger number of people. Right, so I may not have nominated them, but my neighbor nominated them. So they're probably still pretty good. Yeah, it's a good, yeah, it's a good idea. We could do that. We haven't done that, but we, we could do that. We could compare, we could do that. That's, that, that goes in the direction of what Dilip was mentioning earlier, basically looking at the... Yes. We could also, I mean, we haven't done that. We, we of course, we have the, the whole network of uh, recommendations, so we could see whether the extent, you know, how much variation we have in, in centrality for, in degree centrality, in this case, in centrality, or even uh, more sophisticated measure of centrality. Yeah, this is, this is something we could do. Yeah, yeah, this, this is a good suggestion, thanks. Thank you. Um, Okay, but in terms of <laughs> uh, being matched to somebody you didn't nominate doesn't seem to disadvantage you here. So, um, but I see what you hear, what you're saying. And you say, well, maybe it's because, you know, what if you have been matched to somebody who was nominated by lots of people? Maybe that, that's, that's what the role model would be. Okay, okay. So I, for that, I need to document the fact that what is the variation in centrality? And uh, because if there's not much variation in centrality, everybody mentions their five neighbors, and it basically everybody is the same. There's no, there's no centrality. That is a good, yeah, it's a very good point. I will do that. We'll do that. If we will add to the paper, thanks. Um, okay, so this is now again looking at the average. You no, know, I have to be careful because I only have 15 minutes left. Um, the average treatment on. Um, on agricultural performance. These are now in log. Because, you know, there's noise in the data, especially these values, there's always noise. So if you take log, it kind of dampens a little bit the, the upper tail and you don't have to win so rice and all that. So so the, 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 the news is that in terms of yields, you get you get slightly higher yields. This is so basically 7% higher yield for teacher trainee, 4% for the 5% for the students. 
And then in terms of profit, they get about, four, you know, the teachers uh, get about 14%, high profit, 9% and 14% um, uh, compared to the, to the control. So, so there, is a, there is some benefit that, that, is, uh, that is, you know, achieved through that. It's not just that they learn to, to, uh, to, to mimic what they've been told, uh, they also actually benefit uh, from that. So that, that's the good news. Um, so now we, we, so that's, that's all about average treatment effects. So now I want to focus a little bit more about, uh, I want to do a little bit more. One is the, I want to compare um, uh, the students, uh, um, um, depending on whether their teacher is incentivized or not. So basically the, this is the mean for Unincentivized uh, teachers, and this is the the mean, the, the additional increase in score um, in, in the quiz of of students who have been assigned uh, to an incentivized uh, teacher training. And you can see there's a little bit significant, or you know, mildly significant uh, improvement in in, in uh, and it's a little bit stronger if you look as to whether they answer the three main questions correctly. Um, so that means that incentivizing the teacher seems to have induced the teacher to do a slightly better job in teaching them uh, to the test, of course, in teaching them to, to take the test, okay? Um, and this is whether, it, we also look as to whether it has an effect on the teachers. So basically, do the teachers do better on the test because they, they, they taught uh, they had to, they know they had to teach the test. There we don't see. Well, there's, there's a positive, but you know, coefficient here, but it, it's definitely not significant. And you can see that the teachers do in general very very well on the test. Okay, so it looks like they were paying attention, uh, knowing that they're going to be teachers. Not doesn't really depend on them being incentivized. Um, this is. Um, um, this is the effect of, the, or, or rather the absence of effect of, so you see that if you incentivize a teacher, the students do a little bit better on the test, does it translate in higher adoption? The answer is no. So the, the, yeah, the, we have slightly, the, the, the point estimates are very small. The, the, nothing is ever significant. The standard errors are, are very large relative to the coefficient. So basically there's no, but incentivization did not induce more adoption. Okay? And it also did not induce more adoption by the teachers. The reason why we worry about that is, is uh, because in the other paper, the one we did uh, uh, on referrals, what we found is that the farmers who referred or the farmers, um, the other farmers kind of learn about that. They know that they've been referred. Oh, yeah, Marcel, you referred me, okay. And then, so Marcel suddenly decides, oh, maybe now he's observing me. He's, he, you know, he knows that I referred him. So maybe I should put my money where my mouth is. So basically, you know, I, I better adopt a little bit or make, pretend to adopt a little bit so that I don't completely, don't look completely silly to have recommended this person for training. <laughs> Otherwise, he would say, why did you send me something completely useful to, to do something completely useless? Pardon. Sorry. So, so that's why we, 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 we just, Look, this to whether they, they don't do that here. They don't. It, that we did not induce excess adoption by teachers by incentivizing them, which is, I think, is good news. Um, now, so this is about incentivization. This is about the other treatment, whether you are assigned to a, a teacher that you nominated or not. So, does it affect the performance of the student uh, on the quiz? Well, there is a there is a point estimate, which is positive here, but it, it's definitely not significant. Same thing here, this is very small. So basically the answer is no. The fact that you are assigned to somebody you, you, you regard as you listed as a role model doesn't affect uh, how much you learn from them, even on the quiz. Um, and this is uh, what happens um, on your adoption itself. If anything, there's one, one thing here that's negative but uh, which I kind of already saw before, borderline significant at that ten percent level. But other than that, it's all it's all negative, and so you know, that just confirms what we already looked at before. What about mediation analysis? It's going into a, a bigger direction of um, heterogeneity analysis. So 
So here, basically, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna think about what could be the process by which the teacher is um, is inducing adoption. Is it because he's transferring more knowledge, and this knowledge is useful for adoption? Okay. Well, you have to know what the practices are before you can actually follow them and be measured as following them. Or is it that people follow the example? So they basically, you know, if the if the teacher is adopting and maybe he can he can take the, the the trainees to the field, or at least he can talk them through it on the field. So that so that's the so to do that basically we thought well why, why don't we put um, uh, that should not be. Uh, so this is the incentivized teacher trainee, and then we thought, well, if it is uh, uh, no, this, this is not no, this is the quiz performance of the. Of the what happened here? Sorry. I think this is not the teacher's value, it's the, the, the student's value of the... So basically, if if the effect of... Um, it is, no, no, this is, okay, sorry, sorry, I, I got confused for a second. This is the effect on, on, the, on the, 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 the student's performance in the quiz. This is the student and the quiz. And basically students whose teacher does better on the quiz um, also do better on the quiz. So basically, there's some transmission of, of knowledge from the teacher to the student. So teachers who learn more transmit more to their, to their students, even controlling for the fact that the teacher may have been incentivized. So we control for that. So that here is a control. We're just looking whether the transmission is through, or at least some of the transmission is through knowledge transmission. The, the, the teachers who learn more transfer more to their, to their um, uh, to their students. And this is by nominate the same thing by nomination status. So again, you know, this is also there. Um, this is the effect of the of the quiz score on on uh, um, adoption. And so basically you look as to whether this has an effect on adoption as well. And so you get you get a couple significant terms there, but other than that, it seems to be pretty flat. And the same thing uh, is reproduced if you if you compare nominating students to non-nominating students instead of comparing incentivized uh, teacher trainee students to uh, non-incentivized teacher trainee students. So, so basically, what this says is that uh, performance on the quiz score uh, of of the teacher just just has some some transmission to uh, uh, to to adoption, suggesting that knowledge is is one of the channels of transmission as you would expect i mean you would you would hope this is true but but now we have to look at the other thing which is um um examples teaching by example so so here we just we're looking at the teacher's value of uh, the, the corresponding adoption measure so basically are people more likely to adopt is if the teacher adopts are the people more likely to plant on a large proportion of their land if the teacher does that and so on. So basically we we'll, you can see that in all these cases that the, these things are, are, are positive. The only exception being this one where teachers are already quite high to start with. So, so there's not there's perhaps a bit less variation there. But so what we find is that this is basically the evidence that both channels are operating here. One is that if you are taught by a better teacher, someone who has paid more attention to the course knows more you do, you adopt more, it's a channel of transmission, and you also better, you also know better on the quiz. And um, and then the other thing is that uh, if the teacher adopts, you, you seem to, you're more likely to follow his example. So these two things are there. So the last thing I'm gonna do um, in the three minutes I have, I, I should have stopped earlier, but um, um, so we also would like to know whether inviting trainees to be a teacher has an effect of, of, of on their adoption okay not not relative to their students but relative to trainees who would not have received this task of training other students so fortunately we have this other 
uh, experiment we ran. It's, an, it's also an RCT. Um, and in that experiment, we have a whole batch of um, trainees who were randomly selected among the 30 farmers and were only trained. They only received the training. And so we can kind of compare them to the, to the teachers. So that's basically what we do in this, in this first comparison here. And what you find is that, so P2P, the me is basically means that you were in the, in the tr teacher training experiment and not in the other experiment. And what you find is that, so if, if the average adoption in, um, of, the, of, the, uh, of the randomly selected trainees in the other experiment was 36%, then among uh, our teacher trainee, you know, we know it's, it's like close to 70%, so it's basically 34% higher than that. Okay, so that's the, that's the idea. So basically what you get is that um, inviting people to be teacher trainee makes them adopt more. Okay. Um, and it doesn't necessarily do that for the, for the for, you know, if you, these, these co other comparisons are not more significant, but perhaps the, the surprise is that um, the, the student farmers, if you compare them to, uh, to, 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 to other trainees, they not that, you know, sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a bit more, but they're not massively different from people who actually receive the BRAC training, which I think is quite remarkable. These are, these are people who have not seen any BRAC uh, uh, training uh, agent. So they basically, all they have learned about SRI is from other farmers and, and their adoption and behavior in, more gen in general is relatively similar to, to people who in the other, um, in the other uh, experiment received a training directly from BRAC. We, did, we do a small um, a back of the envelope cost benefit analysis. The details of, uh, of the calculations are in the appendix. We get a, uh, we estimate a social return of two point, basically you value the profits and so on and compare it to the cost that we have incurred. And you, you know, you get a two point, two and a half dollars per dollar invested in the program which generate a, a rate of return, a social rate of return of 150%, which is not bad. It's lower than what we got in the other experiment, but the other experiment um, suggested that um, um, if you incentivize, if you push people, they tend to over adopt. So they basically, you, you kind of induce them to experiment with the, with the technology and then everything experimented, they would discover it's not for them. It's too difficult for them. And then, they withdraw from that technology the year after. We, we noticed that. So here, by inducing more people to adopt, we've, you know, it's great. We have induced lots of people to experiment, but as, as we said, not SRI is not for everybody. And so, so as a result, maybe there's excess, if you want excess experimentation, I don't know if it's excess, but you get lots of people experiment who don't necessarily benefit from it. Certainly not in the first year they try it. So that's the, that's the kind of the, the general uh, lesson here. And uh, maybe I should I should stop here. And uh, if there's still time for for questions, if people still have questions. Do you have any questions from the audience? So Marcel, just to follow up on Dilip's earlier question, uh, you don't really look at heterogeneity with respect to any characteristics of either the teachers or the students. No. Yes. And is, uh, and is that because of lack of power or lack of data or, or lack of, or you think it's not really identified? It's probably due to perceived lack of patience for it by uh, editors and referees. I think that's the, they say, <laughs> oh, you are picking winners. You go, you have 27 right. heterogeneity tests. You just report the one that gives you a big kick and so, and then in any case, it's not, uh, it's not as, it's not experimentally assigned and so on. So we, we try to, to, but I think that the, but you have given me some suggestion for, for, uh, I really liked the uh, suggestion earlier about looking at uh, nominations. I think it's a very good suggestion and we should do that in the paper because it really fits in the paper. It fits in the motivation of the paper. And uh, it's, it's of course related to what Dilip was saying as well. So, yeah. uh, I had I had another sort of broader question here. It's, I mean, can you reject the uh, story where there's this one kind of heterogeneity, 
which is uh, skill. And uh, the nominations basically were a way to identify the more skilled farmers. Uh, and the students themselves were selected by BRAC on the basis of something which I probably assume is related to farming skill. So you've already got a pre-selected, you know, high skilled farmers and then within them you're selecting the most skilled and they just happen to be teachers. So can you reject the hypothesis that it's just about selection of skill, that all this teaching stuff is, you know, is not doing anything? Uh, I mean, of course, you know, there's, there's some diffusion, obviously, uh, but, you know, but basically, you know, it's not nothing to do with skill in teaching or anything like that. I mean, it's just skill in picking up stuff that's now generally available in the village. No, but I mean, that's fine, but but it's not true that we have only selected as teachers those that were the most skilled uh, as measured by the number of nominations they received. We have four, four people among the- you know, But it was leaders. biased in favor of the people with high, yeah. high nominations. So I think we, you know, doing what Sujata was suggesting is a good idea is you know, actually, why not just look at the number of nominations uh, that you received and just look at you know, how performance varied with that. Uh, that, that would yeah. be one way of getting at it, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Hey. Yeah, I can do that, I can do that. But remember, in terms of the test itself, I mean, I, we have corrected for the stratification. So, so I, I don't think that's the, that's, that's, I don't think that is invalidating our results because we've we've no, thought about no, it. No, it's a different interpretation. I'm just saying I'm not disputing the statistical validity of your results. It's just a question of what what you think is sort of going on underneath and whether teaching has anything to do with it. Yes. So in the first experiment, the one with the 182 or whatever villages where you didn't yes. ask them to teach, but did you select them the same way? It was simpler because we were not trying to match. But uh, okay, so the 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 the, the, the okay, I can. So in that experiment, the, the start is the same. We take thirty. Brack shows up, picks their thirty farmers because that's the way they they kind of line up farmers for the SRI training. So they kind of identify them and then they keep them, and they then they they bring the the training uh, agent. So so and they train them in groups of twelve. So basically, we, we basically ra randomly selected uh, 12 farmers of the 30 and uh, assigned them to for the first uh, training session. And then at the end of the training session, each of them was asked to, so there were 18 farmers left on the list. So before they left, <laughs> they said, oh, before you leave, and because they get paid their little stipend. So before you, you know, here's a list, pick a name on the list as to who would most benefit from uh, the, the BRAC training? So they basically look at the list and say, oh, okay, I, I can see uh, Albert's on the list, so I'm gonna mention Albert. And then the next person comes and say, oh, I'm gonna mention Albert too. And I, no, 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 look, the, it's already been crossed. You can't mention Albert anymore. You have to mention someone else. Okay, I'm gonna mention Chujata. So they basically men mention someone else. So basically then you can see the people who have been. So in that paper, we, we actually use that that order if you want to see. Um, the bottom line is that um, they did not, they did not recommend on average. So remember they, they recommend 12 people out of 18. So normally you should, you should, you know, that the six worst farmers, the least able farmers, the least skilled farmers should have been dropped out of the list. So they, they you should basically see that um, this selected sample of 12 out of 18 farmers should be better than the 12 randomly selected farmers, mm. right? Mm. Because the second sample is, a, is only two thirds of the 18 and they've been selected to be the more skilled farmers. Mm. So you should see that they are adopting more because they understand what's going on and they, they get more, more benefit from it. That's not that what we find at all. So the reason I was asking was I was wondering if that helps you answer Dilip's question about whether there's something about having to teach that makes you a better adopter yourself, but yeah, yeah. you can't actually answer that question because the way that these teachers, those guys were selected is different. 
it's random. They're not both being selected the same way and then some get to teach and others don't get to teach. It's not as simple as that. But I mean, everybody could have been selected to teach. Everybody has a probability of being selected. If you are over 15 above median, you have uh, four out of 15 chances. If you are above the 15, you have two out of 15 chances. Everybody could be a teacher. And we correct for the probabilities of, of you being being a teacher. Yeah. yeah, that I do understand that. Okay, I think we're a little bit past time. So uh, I'd like to thank Marcel, very interesting presentation. And I'd like thank to you. thank, I also wanna thank the staff at IEMS who have been coordinating the webinars for all six seminars. So that's Carla who's managing today, Carla Chan and uh, Joey Chu who's uh, the manager at IMS. I think it's been really well managed. So, you know, silent applause. Thank and uh, this was obviously a second best um, event in lieu yeah. of having a workshop in person, uh, but I think <laughs> it's been really valuable in the world of COVID to still yes. be able to have some intellectual exchange and bring, you know, leading people working on common issues of interest. So I wanna thank all the participants. Yeah, I appreciate it very much having you having me. I really enjoyed it. And thanks for the excellent comments. Thank you. Thank you, Marcel. Okay. Goodbye, Thank everyone. You. Bye. 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 Bye.